Remain standing and get your Bible this morning. So I thank God today for the Word of God. Today, my mind's alert, my heart is receptive to receive the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can have what the Word says I can have. For my Bible, I said my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. And you are a blessed person. God bless you. Hallelujah. My heart's been so heavy this week for the situation in Ukraine. And I've been praying, God work those miracles you worked in the Bible. Turn to any on, on themselves. Let them wipe themselves out. Is Joshua, is uh, Jehoshaphat, God spoke to Jehoshaphat, said, Jehoshaphat, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What courage, what strength, perseverance those people are dealing with over there. And I honor them. We pray for them. There's got to be a happening in the spirit. There's got to be a happening in the spirit. And we believe it's going to happen. Because we're not the only people pray. There's multitudes, millions and millions of people. That, that country is full of Christians. Full of Christians. Wonderful people. Poland's got hundreds of churches. Spirit-filled churches close by. We're going to see a breakthrough. A devil cannot destroy that country. It may look like it is, but God's going to raise it up, be stronger than ever before. Stronger than ever. God's going to raise you and I up to be stronger than ever before. Let the weak say, let the weak say, I am strong. Not going to be strong. He says, I am strong. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. I'll start there this morning. Oh, later. Not a new message on my heart. He just got a different way he wants me to say some things. The message is titled, Faith with an Attitude. <laughs> faith with an Attitude. You can have faith, but you need to have an attitude with it. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, think about Noah for a moment. God spoke to Noah to build an ark. He didn't know what an ark was. God gave him the instructions, sizes, measurements, everything. But he didn't know what it was. He said it's going to flood. A flood is coming. It's never rained before. All their water came from the mist from the earth up to that point in time. So he had an attitude. He going to obey God. Can you imagine for 100 years of people that criticize him? You haven't even lived 100 years. You've been criticized a lot. Times that you've been so discouraged with certain people, situations. But Noah, for 100 years, he had a strong attitude. When David stood before that giant, bigger than any man he's ever faced. Bigger than any situation he's ever faced. But he said, looked at that giant and said, who do you think you are? See, this is what we've got to do. We've got to have a faith that's so, so strong and have an attitude with it. So what do you think you're doing? The devil's trying to blow out your candle. But we're going to let our light shine. And David said, who do you think you are, you uncircumcised for this thing? Stood before that giant. Knowing that if God be with him, who could be against him? In every situation we are challenged with in life, we've got to have an attitude. I'm going to get what God's word says I can have. We find here in Romans 11 chapter, it says here, verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
For he who comes to God must believe that he is God, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And the next one goes talks about Noah. Noah had that kind of faith. And in verse 5 here in, in Hebrews 11 chapter, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death that was not found because God has taken him up for before he was taken, he had this testimony. He pleased the Father. I want to please the Father. I don't know all he did to please the Father, but I like to get in that category. Please the Father. I want to please God. And it's an attitude. Anytime your faith is challenged, you need to get an attitude. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to falter. You may be having a financial situation, but God is going to supply. Gil said, so my God shall supply. I mean, he didn't say it, just say it. He was anointed. The anointed word came forth. My God shall supply. I got an attitude. If I get attacked in my body, I'm going to live. I don't care if I got pain in my body, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Either through the power of the Holy Spirit or I'm going to a doctor. Either way, I'm going to get healed and I'm going to get violent about it. I'm going to have an attitude. Amen. Sometimes we don't understand why certain things don't work, but God always has another way. But my attitude is, if I have a shortage of money, my God shall supply. If I'm tacked to my body, i got, got to get an attitude. Some people get the wrong attitude. God's not working for me. I prayed, 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 believed and cried and stomped the floor, kicked my car. <laughs> attitude. Attitude. My attitude is also, I am ne never going to let anything offend me. I said, I never will let anything offend me. Or you listen to me this morning. Say, I will never allow anything to offend me. That's a, that's a proclamation right there. That's a degree, decree. I decree nothing will move, move me. I like what Paul says, Acts chapter 26, I believe it is. He said, none of these things move me. Paul had an attitude. Whatever he found himself in, he had an attitude. This is not going to take me away from God. They throw him in one prison. He wrote a book. Got out, throw him in another prison. He wrote another book. <laughs> so whatever challenge he was involved in, he get with God. That's the problem today with a lot of people. When we're challenged, we kind of get away from God. We need to be stronger today than we were a year ago. I said, we need to be stronger in faith today than we were a year ago. Don't let your faith be shaken. Don't let circumstances bother you. Like Gil said, we're living in dark days, dark times, but we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So wherever you go, you need to let your light shine. I have an attitude. Everywhere I go, I'm going to believe God uses me to be a witness, to share Jesus with somebody, pray for somebody. Never be embarrassed to be used by Jesus. Never be embarrassed. You may not know what to say, but I guarantee you if you start talking, God will give you the words. Many times I didn't know what I was going to say. When I start talking, anointing come, God give me the word. Have an attitude. I'm going to serve God. I don't care what the world is going through. I don't care what the situation is. I'm going to stay faithful. My attitude, I'm going to stay faithful. Uh, my attitude is I'm going to keep paying my tithes. I'll get, keep giving up. That's my attitude. Amen. That's my attitude. Because I know if I have a good attitude, the windows of heaven will open. Amen. God said, I'll pour out a blessing on you. And the Bible says in Malachi, will a man rob God? Where? In tithes and offerings. Amen. What is he talking about? Tithe, robbing God and tithes and offerings. You're robbing God from blessing you if you don't tithe. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for your attitude. Get a good attitude when it comes time to pray. Don't say, well, they're going to have another prayer night. I'm not coming. They're just going to pray. They're just going to pray. We've got to learn to enjoy prayer. Don't ever let prayer be a burden. It, and the more we come together to pray, the more stronger we get because 
corporate prayer is powerful. Look what happened in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. 120 began to pray, changed the whole world. Amen. Amen. All got baptized in the Holy Ghost, left there, and 5,000 people got saved. Amen. Corporate prayer changes things. Yes. Yes. You can pray by yourself, and if you can't get here for some reason, pray. But if you can get here, you need to get here. Right. Prayer should never be a burden. It should never be a burden to come to church. My attitude is I love church. I always want to come to church. Record those three amens. <laughs> Let's get us attitude. Listen, I, I was thinking about this message for, I was going to preach it last week, and the Lord changed that anyway. I was thinking about this for several weeks. I was thinking about when I had a, the days before Jesus. I don't, I'm not going to say a lot about it, but anyway, my attitude, no, well, nobody could whip me, but I did get whipped time or two, but I won more than I lost. Because my attitude, when I got knocked down, I get back up. And when I got born again, when I get knocked down, I get back up. If I make a mistake, I, I correct it by repentance, turn from it. I have an attitude, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve God faithfully. I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be condemned. As, as Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to be condemned. I'm just going to love Jesus. I said, I'm going to love Jesus. Daniel had an attitude when he threw him into the dinner lines. He just took the opportunity to take a nap. And slept all night long. Used it one of the lines for a pillow. Man, that must have been nice and soft. And the king came down the next day. Daniel's God saved him. Daniel's God. People should see Alan's God. James's God. Vernon's God. Amen. People should see God in us. Yes. Said, look, God is in this man or in this woman. Amen. Praise God. We've got to raise our voices to God and praise God and worship Him. My attitude is when I come to church, I'm going to worship God. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to worship today. I had too many issues this week. <laughs> That's the time you need to worship. Yes. If you worship through your issues, God will work some miracles for you. Amen. Huh? Jehoshaphat, God told Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat when he went against the enemy, put singers out there in front. We're going to destroy the enemy with singers. Amen. See, when you're singing, you know you're destroying the devil. Amen. He don't want you singing. He don't want you praising him. He don't want you to read your Bible. Amen. My attitude is every day, I'm going to read my Bible, read a scripture somewhere every single day. Amen. I'm determined. Amen. If I could eat every day, <laughs> if I could eat every day, I could read a scripture every day. Amen. Don't ever tell me you don't have time to read the word and Amen. pray. You've got time to eat. I look around, I don't see nobody about to fall out because they hadn't eaten in a long time. <laughs> amen? amen? I said, amen? amen? Abraham had a faith attitude. God said, Abraham, take your own son, Isaac. Now, he had another son, to Hagar, but see, he didn't count him as his son because Isaac was a son of promise. Take your own son to the mountain. When he got to Mount Moriah, he said, sacrifice him. Let's look right here in this number chapter of Hebrews. Look at verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he had received the promise offered up as his only begotten son. In other words, God gave him a miracle. And he could have said, God, why are you taking it back away from me for? God gives us something, he never takes it back. It may look like it, but he will never do that. His only be his, he says here in this verse of scripture, last part, received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Your seed shall be called. Concluding that God, listen to this verse 19, this is powerful right here. 
Man, this, this here make, make, a, make you want to shout. Concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. He saw himself already killing his son, but he saw himself, he saw himself sit, looking at his son after he killed him, being raised back up. So that's the type of shadow of Jesus on the cross. God saw his son die, but he also saw him raised. Are you hearing me? That's why the scripture says in, in Romans chapter 4, 17, call those things which be not as though they were. And Abraham had to see it. Things you believe in God for, you've got to see it by faith. You've got to see it by faith. Draw, draw a picture in your mind and never let go. Have an attitude. Nothing is going to stop me from believing God. And Abraham, Abraham said, hey, that's okay. If I kill my son, God's going to raise him back up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If something happens to me today or tomorrow, whatever, God's going to restore it back to me. Amen. Every dime the devil has stolen from you, if you, can, if you continue to be faithful and obedient to the word of God, God will restore it back to you Amen. and bring a little extra. Amen. Somebody said, well, I've been standing a long time. When you've done all? Amen. When you've done all? He keeps standing. Abraham believed God. 25 years for a son. 25. Around 25 years. He got to be an old man. He could look to himself and say, ain't no way. He looked at my wife. His wife is almost 90 years old, and he, here he is almost 100. And he could look to himself and say, ain't no way. But he had a, he had a, he had a vision and understanding when God told him something, it will come to pass. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Look here at uh, chapter 10 of Hebrews. Look at verse 34, 35. Paul said, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, or the word of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. You will receive the promise Amen. if you keep trusting God, believing God. For verse 37 says this, For yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Jesus is coming. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Amen. I'm looking for the upper taker, not the undertaker. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So either way, I'm going to be happy. Amen. 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 We don't, none of us like to die before the rapture, but we all want to go to heaven. Amen. That's just a road we have to take. Right. But victory, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, victory is swallowed up in death. Go over to God. We have victory at all times. He says here in verse 37 again, for yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Amen. Now this is 2,000 years ago. He says it's going to be a little while. If, if it was a little while then, 2,000 years ago, how close do you think it is now? Amen. You need to go and read Ezekiel chapter 37, 38. Amen. Amen. And look at the scriptures there. and find out that Russia and China when they're coming down against Israel, God said, I'm going to put a hook in their jaw. Amen. Ain't nobody going to defeat Israel. Amen. Ain't nobody going to defeat us. Amen. My attitude is we are always going to win. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. We're always going to win. That's, that's my attitude. Amen. Amen. I think we must have had the attitude all these years. We stayed married for 58, 59, <laughs> 59 years. She kept saying, I knew I hadn't hit the number yet. <laughs> so, so when I hit the number, she said, <laughs> you know, your wife will keep you out of trouble Amen. if you follow her lead. Amen. What was I talking about? She, just, she distracted me over there. But follow God. Amen. Trust him. 
Lean not to your own understanding. And the scripture says here in verse 8, 38, now the just shall live by what? Faith. As Gil said this morning, we walk by faith and not by sight. Not by sight. I thought I was going to preach my message there for a while. <laughs> oh, live by faith. Now what is faith? Now faith, Hebrews 11 one said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let me read it out of the Amplified Bible. If you can pull that up on the overhead, I appreciate it. Amplified Bible. In Hebrews 11 chapter, and we'll look at verse 1. I like this Amplified Bible on this. So powerful. So powerful. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of the reality faith perceiving is real fact. Faith is not revealed in the senses. In your natural mind, you can't figure out how it's going to work. That's why you got to operate in the spirit. <laughs> operate through the word of God. Trust God's word. He says here again, now, let me read it again, it's so good. Now faith is the assurance to confirmation the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of the reality, faith perceiving is real fact. Faith is a fact. Stick with faith. We've seen miracles. You've had miracles in your life. We've had miracles in our life. And yet we still get challenges. I don't care how many miracles, you cannot live off the miracles, but you can live off the word. Don't ever get to say, well, God worked it out before because I got a miracle. But here's the thing. When you say it, say, God's going to work it out again because I'm standing on the Word. Amen. When you stand on the Word, God will work things out for you. Amen. Are you here? Walk by faith and not by sight. I said, walk by faith. Faith is real, church. Amen. We're all saved by faith. When he says over here in uh, Hebrews uh, the 11th chapter, verse 6, he says here, but without faith it is impossible to please God. But see, when we're born again, in, in, in Romans 12, 3 says, we are given the measure of faith. He's not talking about you don't have faith. What he's talking about here, you need to activate your faith. Amen. You have faith, but you're not activating it. How do I activate my faith? Through my mouth. Amen. Speak God's word out of your mouth. Amen. You may have pain in your body, speak healing. You're not in the now. You know it's there, but still speak the word of God. You may be lacking some finances, but speak, I got plenty. Amen. And say, God's my supplier. Amen. He meets every need. Amen. If every need's met, I got no needs. Right. Amen. Amen. Trust his word. Speak his word. Call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Faith is real. Yes. Faith is a reality. Perceiving the real fact and is not revealed by the senses. You cannot operate as a child of God with your senses because your mind will give you a fit. Amen. Romans 12, 1 or 2 says, what does it say? It says <laughs> be renewed. By the, be, be, not be, I got it. be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. By the, sometimes I need a little boost. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind. Amen. And the message Bible says, don't let people or situations take over your life. That's, I'm paraphrasing out of my own self here. Don't let the world system take you down. Don't be conformed, don't be conformed to this world. Amen. Don't let, in other words, don't get shaped like this world. Amen. The world is trying to be reshaped. Our system is trying to be reshaped, not only in, in the United States, but the whole world. Yes. Russia, Putin right now, he's wanting to reshape the whole world. Amen. That's his motive right there. That's his motive. He wants to reshape the whole world. But we as children of God, we've got to get stronger in faith as ever, never before. We've got to get strong in faith, Amen. in the power of his ability, his might, Amen. and don't back up. 
Get, I mean, get faith so strong in you, you could believe God for anything. Believe God for anything because there's nothing impossible with God. I say there's nothing impossible with God. Miss Wigg Smith Wigglesworth said this, no man looks at appearances if he believes God. You can't look at the situation if you're going to believe God. This is, this is what you've got to believe right here. Believe the word of God. So we have to activate our faith through our mouth. And the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. In other words, the gates of hell cannot destroy the church. Hell will not destroy us. We are the church. Hell will not destroy us. The only way it can destroy a child of God is if you give into it. I'm not going to get conformed to the way the world wants me to act. I'm conforming my life to the Word of God. We are made in the image of God. I said we are made in His image. We are the image of God. Talk like God. Act like God. Hold yourself high in Jesus. Not in natural pride, but spiritual pride. Praise God. Somebody look at you, you ought to be always smiling. Somebody says, why, do you, why do you smile all the time? So I can't help myself. Jesus has got a smile, a smile on my life. He makes me smile all the time. See, Jesus lives inside of me. He's always smiling, so I can't help but smile. Why are you so happy all the time? I'm not happy in the natural all the time, but I'm happy in the things of the Spirit all the time. If I catch myself trying to be unhappy, I'm going to get happy. I don't have to go buy a happy meal to get happy. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, rejoice. My attitude should be, when I don't see it in the natural, I see it in the spirit. I see it. You remember some time back, it's been, this, this August will be 11 years since I had my stroke. And I remember when I was in the hospital, my wife can verify it. You could lot of can verify it. When I was up there in the hospital, I could see myself. I, we used to go down to Florida every year 20 times and and uh, I go down we go to the beach I don't like swimming in the ocean anymore I like sitting on the beach under a shade tree <laughs> I do not want to get burnt but I will always sit in that chair and, and take sand and put, put it on my feet and kick back to take a little nap I know none of, none of you have never done that but uh, <laughs> And so while I was in the hospital, I had a vision. I saw myself at the beach again, sitting in the same place, putting sand over my feet. And when I got out of the hospital, I had to go back three months later and have a, a LASIK surgery done on my prostate. I had a lot of things. The devil tried his best to put my light out. I mean, he was pouring, pouring water here and pouring water there. But then they had to put a bag on me for a short period of time. Eight months. Eight, well, that was before the surgery. I wore a bag for, I preached in a bag for eight months. Because I had challenges with my prostate. But then after I had the stroke, then he went and did a laser surgery. But I still had to wear a bag for a short period of time. But I come to church in it. Still preach. You never know it. You never know it. Because my attitude was, I'm going to serve God. I don't care what I got to wrap myself up in. I'm going to serve God. That's my attitude. My wife will tell you I've got an attitude when it comes to God. I know by his stripes I'm healed. That's my attitude. And I know I'll never fail because God can fail. For God to fail, he has to fall off the throne. I'm just going to stay strong. None of these things move me. I love, I love studying behind Paul. And he says in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, he says, I'm more than a conqueror. 
He said, I am more than a conqueror. I'm not just a conqueror. Let's, let's go over and look at it. Let's read it. Romans chapter 8. You need, need to get our eyes right dead on it. How many are going to get a, a better attitude in faith? Amen. I'm working on that too. I'm working on it. Get a better attitude on faith. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 says this. Let's go back to verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? It's written, he says here, verse 36, all day long we are killed. We are, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what the devil sees. Verse 37 says, yet in all, yet in all these things, Amen. somebody said, in all these things, in all these things we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. I am persuaded, I am convinced, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Amen. I'm standing strong. Amen. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. I don't change my faith. Amen. My heart breaks as I look over the years. I've been I've been preaching for 50 years, pastoring for 50 years, preaching longer than that. As I look back over the years, and I see people who used to be so dedicated, so on fire for God, bring the Bible, bring the notebooks, take notes, and I don't even see them in church no more. Some of them I see, they go into church and don't even teach about the Holy Ghost. Don't even teach the Holy Ghost. They said, we got beyond that. How can you get beyond the Holy Ghost? That's a lie from the pits of hell. I understand if you're in the church, you've never heard of it before, never been taught it, I understand that. But when you have been taught the Word of God, in this church, you have been taught over the last 40 years, 40 years, 40, 40 years. Man, 40 years I've taught you the Word of God. And also remember when I was Got out of the hospital. One night I was praying a Sunday night before church. My first time back in the pulpit. Holy Spirit spoke strong to me. Teach my people faith. I thought for a minute. That can't be God because I'm teaching my people faith. As I began to meditate on that, he wanted me to teach more on it. Some people said, we're going to hear about faith again. We're going to hear about faith again. Are you living it? Are you practicing it? Are you standing strong in it? You know, are you falling apart every time you're texted? Stay strong in faith. Stay strong in faith. Don't fall apart. Apart. Now, if you lose a loved one, there's nothing wrong with crying. We can do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But you don't stay in grief all the time because that'll take you out. But we do grieve because. There'd be something wrong with it if you didn't grieve for your loved one. Amen. We grieve. But at the same time, we shake ourselves and get back strong in the things of God. Amen. 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 I'm more than a conqueror. Somebody shout, I'm more than a conqueror. <laughs> whatever we go through, Amen. whatever life throws at me, I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on Jesus because I couldn't do anything. My strength comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. My strength comes from knowing what the Bible says. Amen. Stay strong in the Word of God. Don't let people try to convince you to get out of church. You don't need church no more. I know people right now that tell other people, I don't, I don't need church no more. I, got, I, I have my own church. I just, I've, seen, I've seen over the years how that went. You need church. Amen. Look right here to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 25. No, that's not Romans 12. What is it? Hebrews 12? Yes. Yes. Hebrews, 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 
Hebrews 12, 24, 25. Thank God for good help. Y'all been paying good attention over the years. You got there? Verse 25, forsaken not the assembling of yourselves together, as a man or some is, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. What he's saying is, the closer we get to the end, the more faithful we should be to God's house. The house don't save you, but he wants us together. He wants us to be joined together. Jesus went to church himself. He was in the temple when he was 12 years old. His family was devout Christians. He'd go to church. Churches and poor people are preaching against churches now. Amen. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, this whole world's changing. I mean, I, you seem like you wake up one day and everything's different. Amen. I mean, just in the last five years, it seems like it's, everything's different. Things are changing. But Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today, and I'll be the same tomorrow. I'm going to follow my lead. Amen. I'm not changing. I'm sticking with the word. I, I might get more revelation of the word, but I'm not, but I'm not changing. Amen. Stay strong, church. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, stay, stay strong in faith. Amen. Go ahead and get you a faith attitude. Go ahead and get a faith attitude. Amen. People's got other attitudes, but we need a faith attitude. People get a pouting attitude, but we need a faith attitude. Stay strong in faith. Stay strong in him. And we'll tell you, God will work everything out. And you don't have to tell people your problems. Because most of the time, 99.9.9, .9, they're going to tell somebody else what you told them. But if you could find you just one faith friend, Amen. one faith friend that you can trust, you need to share and pray, let people pray with you. Amen. I got a lot of faith friends in this church. A lot of faith friends. Amen. Thank God you prayed for me and I've been praying for you. Amen. We still we stood together. Yes, thank God. What do you got, Rob? Give me a microphone. I showed a pastor this a while back, and he said he was going to call me up. And I, I just called you up. <laughs> <laughs> he reminded me, though. not But uh, uh, this is a passion version of the uh, Hebrews 10, 25. And it says, um, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. So be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you're so-called fellowshipping with. There you go. That's good. You know, Get with people that's going to encourage you to come to church, to fellowship, Amen. not to pull away. This is not, we need to realize what time it is. Je Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. I don't want to be at home. I'd rather be here in church, Amen. Amen. fellowshipping, Amen. and hearing the word. That's good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. That's good, Ron. I had forgotten about that, but I'm glad you reminded me this morning. Praise God. I knew when I saw him hold a phone up, I knew he wanted something. <laughs> but that's so true. Don't fall back. But it's not daylight savings time. <laughs> Set your clock. Jesus. J E S U S. He's always on time. He's always on time. Amen. Amen.